Today is Saturday, the 12th of February, 2022. And uh, we are gathering here today for the 20th session on mindfulness uh, for beginners in English. And on behalf of all the organizers and on behalf of all the attendees, I would like to welcome Venerable Bhante Homa Gama Dhamma Kusalatero to today's session. And I would also like to uh, welcome all the attendees uh, participating to today's session through Zoom and Mixela. And uh, to commence uh, today's session, I would like to hand over the microphone to Bhante to commence with the uh, the in-session mindful practice uh, as the first step in our agenda. Over to you, Bhante. Thank you. Much merits. Another Saturday, we are meeting with our usual program. So we will spend about 10-15 minutes doing uh, practicing part. And as the starting point, we will do that and then move forward with the program. So today I thought maybe we can do a sitting session. For this, you have to adjust your seat and make sure that you are comfortable. Make sure that you have balance in, in your posture. And when you feel comfortable, you may close your eyes and notice that you are sitting. Notice what you notice when you pay attention like this. Maybe as a starting point, you may notice the sounds from the surrounding. Various thoughts and ideas may pop into your head. And of course, the bodily sensations are there. Maybe the breath is prominent. You can feel ingoing and outgoing breath. Sometimes the movement of the stomach according to your breath or even a heartbeat kind of a vibration you may notice. Then the temperature differences, pressure points on your back, they too can appear. So the idea is to be the observer, calmly sit and observe, be aware of whatever the things that you feel. Again and again, the sounds may appear. Again and again, thoughts may appear. But among them, you try to be aware that you are sitting. You may feel sleepy. Sometimes pain may appear inside your body. Whatever comes, we try to maintain this awareness. Among all these things, you are calm and peaceful. And you are aware. So as a group, we will try and maintain this awareness for a few more minutes.
Okay, now you can open your eyes again. That's a good way to start a session. We did some, maybe about 15 minutes of practice. That's the starting part. Now we can move forward to the remaining ones. Now, Bhante. Thank you very much, Bhante, for that uh, insightful uh, training on in, in session mindful practice. Uh, so the next item in our agenda is to uh, briefly uh, share some information for uh, newcomers on how to start on mindful practice. Uh, the uh, intention of this uh, program is to enable you to uh, start being more mindful and the techniques associated with uh, such uh, endeavor. So through the session, Bhante will advise based on questions and reflection reports uh, sent to us for today and then follow up with uh, the talk for today. But um, if you're a beginner or as a refresher for anyone who's joining, who needs a refresh, refresher uh, on, this, uh, on these few steps, I will go through the initial uh, steps to uh, commence mindful practice. The first is to go through the two videos listed here. Now you can see them on the screen shared. There's one video on mindful walking and uh, you can go through that video and it will give you a specific uh, idea of uh, what to do, what to observe and how to be mindful during your walking. Uh, what you can do is uh, walk a certain distance uh, uh, that you can find available in your within your uh, home or outside your home, even that is possible. And uh, then the next video is on mindful sitting. You can uh, select a, a reasonably quiet area within your house or even outside. Outdoor location is also fine. Uh, and then uh, uh, likewise, you can go through the video and understand what to do and what to observe uh, during a mindful session. Uh, then uh, during a mindful sitting session. And once you are familiar with the basic concept in each of these videos, uh, you can allocate some time uh, each day. Like it, if you are starting, it can be five minutes or 10 minutes for you to get an understanding flavor of what you are going to do. And then you can gradually increase your time allocated. You can start with five or 10 minutes uh, on your mindful walking. And you can stretch it up to about one hour uh, if you can later. And then for mindful sitting, you can again allocate as a start five to 10 minutes and then try to stretch it to about one hour when, when you find it is possible. Once you do this for three, four days, you will get a sufficient understanding of uh, how you are interacting uh, with yourself on each of these sessions. And you will feel start feeling that it is creating some positive impact in uh, your outlook on life. Then once you are uh, comfortable after three or four sessions or after three or four days, you can start uh, writing your experience for each session. For mindful walking, you can write what your primary object, uh, object of uh, observation was, whether it was the sole of your feet touching the floor, it could be, could be the body movement, or it could be the, the, the walking rhythm or uh, the, any physical aspect of your walk. And then uh, you can write it in your own words, what you felt, whether you got distracted, whether you were able to bring back your focus into your bodily sensations. And you can write some uh, sentences in your own writing and uh, a complete uh, a report, a reflection report is what we call it on mindful walking. Then you can go to mindful sitting again. If you select the, you can select the primary object as breath going in or breath moving out, or you can uh, select uh, to focus on uh, the abdomen uh, rising and falling or any other uh, bodily sensations like the heartbeat can be chosen as the primary object. Then once you complete uh, these sessions on mindful sitting, you can describe what you felt, uh, whether you got distracted from thoughts and how you managed to 
uh, shift the focus back into your primary object of observation and uh, put put all that uh, into written format in your own style in your own uh, words then you can uh, send it to us one of the primary focuses of this program is to is for us to present these uh, statements written statements to bante during the session and for bante to analyze those reports and provide you with uh, advice and insight to further advance your mindful sessions mindful practice sessions so we would likewise we would present these reports to bante and with that uh, advice you can keep on improving your mindful activities or mindfulness in general uh, you can send the reports to us through the google form shown in uh, item 4 or step 4 or you can email it to beginnersnb@gmail.com it is there on the screen i will shortly put all these details into the zoom chat section uh, through pdf and through text so you can copy and paste from there so uh, also the mindful practice uh, recordings from previous sessions are again available uh, for you to uh, go back and listen so with that uh, the next up on our agenda is for us to uh, uh, present the reports received for today for bante to provide us with advice although these uh, reports presented to us are from uh, a few participants for today uh, it is quite beneficial for all of us taking part to listen to the question or the report and also to listen uh, to bante's response so that we will be using those parallel insights in our practice also so i hope all of you can uh, uh, attentively uh, participate in the next session and i would like to invite the next presenter to uh, present the reflection reports received for today thank you very much Um, thank you, Namanta. Avasarai Bante. Um, we have two reflection reports received today. Um, I'll start with the first one, which is from an adult. Walking meditation. Walk 25 steps on tile floor, watching sensations on feet and legs. Hardness, softness, weight, lightness. Um, in brackets, earth, patavi, warm, cold, in brackets, fire, pejo, itch, sweaty, dry, in brackets, apo, water, um, pain, in brackets, vedana, and feeling, pins and needles, areas, not touching floor, and touching floor, noted. These were noted as elements and aggregates by the mind. Sounds heard on placing and lifting feet at times. Noted as sound by the mind, noted reflection of evening sunlight on tiled floor and observed mind proliferating briefly as a beautiful sunset till mind Remember, this was impermanent. As eyes sensitivity, the reflection, eye consciousness also transcend and due to current conditions, therefore unsatisfactory and not mine. Mind went back to feel, observed sensation in chest, which is discomfort, breath, in and out breath, face, hair and touch, nose tickled, which passed quickly, not distracting. Associated with thought, this too will pass. Although at the beginning of the session, mind distracted by short thoughts that came and went, this reduced as the time passed, meditated for one hour. Sitting meditation. After writing the report of the sitting meditation, uh, walking meditation, sat on cushion to observe breath. Noted first, 
the heavy sensation of eyelids, dry sensation in eyelids, weight of clothes on body, bottom on the cushion, weight of hand on the other, chest expansion and contraction, initially cooler in breath, more prominent in one nostril and warmer out breath in the other, later this changed to being in one nostril, became subtle and appeared away from face first on one side and then the other came closer towards nostrils after a while. Breath more soft in one nostril at times compared to the other. Some images came and went. Several sounds heard, noted as sounds only. Watched one of the sounds rising and passing. A space appeared and blew up like balloon. Continued to watch breath which appeared more prominent in left nostril, distorted and flattened. Space disappeared after a short time and breath was very fine. Mind alert, peaceful. Thoughts proliferated at one point and came back to out breath on left nostril. Smell noted as unpleasant, aware of it rising and passing. Mind proliferated about cause and effect and of the smell consciousness, but came back to breath, pain noted, knew it would pass, not distracting. Eyes opened before the alarm went, which was set for one hour with one minute to go. With much merit to Bante and the organizers. End of report. Okay, so I this experience is valuable when you hear the comments when you hear the experience you can see various things are appearing after a while they are disappearing so this is happening again and again if you listen to the report again you can see how these things are coming and going so when you practice more and more initially your mind will try to create some story based on these appearances, maybe a thought, maybe some other feeling, it will create some kind of a story. But with time, you realize that they are just appearing after a while they disappear. So this is the very nature of our universe. If you grab one thing, then you can create a story whole book you can write based on that but if you just let go then you realize after a while another thing coming right so that is the practice initially it is natural of our mind to grab certain things and based on that create some kind of a story again and again we notice that again and again we try to maintain our awareness again and again we try to be present that's the effort that you are doing that's the practice that you are doing you recognize i am thinking um uh, identifying um storytelling you are again and again coming to the present moment when you do that little by little you develop the ability to be with this flow, this ever-changing flux, you can be with it and not create a story. Instead, just be the observer, just be with the process. And that ability you can see, you develop with practice. More you practice, the stronger this ability will become. So you can just observe what is happening around you and without grabbing onto them, without holding onto them, you can just let go. And when you let go, another thing will come. Another thing will appear again and again. This process is happening. So if you try to give a value to it, then it will become vivid and colorful. You can create some story based on that. So usually the worldly people, you can see 
they have a lot of questions based on these things. They have a lot of stories based on these things. They have a lot of colorful things that they want to share with the world. But the practitioner, they become more and more peaceful. They become quieter. They become more and more uh, without words because you don't need to explain these things. It's another part of this change in flux. It was what it was, you will say, and just move on, move forward, and you are ready for the next moment. You are ready for the next thing that will appear. So that is the practice we want to develop little by little. So that's why when, when it comes to a beginner, they have a lot of questions. Their thinking patterns are very complicated. Their minds are vivid and colorful. But more you practice, simpler it becomes. Your thinking patterns become more and more simple. Your minds become more and more simple. And the world is not so colorful and appealing to you. Instead, you just live in the present moment. You are just happy and peaceful in this present moment. So that, that's a matured mind through the practice. So this is the path that we are walking. You start with a lot of questions. You start with a lot of ideas. You start with a vivid, colorful mind. But with time, you realize when, when you experience this reality, the real nature, again and again, when you experience this ever-changing flux, then you become more and more peaceful, more and more simple-minded and appreciating the present moment that is there. So that's why we are, we are aiming at. So you can again and again do this practice. Try and see whether you can continue this even towards your day-to-day -day life. This is walking and sitting. But of course, while doing some other activity, maybe brushing, maybe having a meal, same thing is happening. Again and again, the thoughts will appear. Various sights may appear. You may feel certain things from your body but the same kind of a process that is happening. So the next step would be to just try and see, is it the same when I do some other activity, when I sweep, when I drive, when I eat something, when I drink something, can I be aware, can I be just be the observer and try and see this ever-changing flux. So that's the idea. Try and practice again and again. You can share your experience with the group. Thank you, Bhante. The next report is also from an adult. The following reports are from two different days of practice. Walking meditation. Walked on tile floor distance of about 15 steps, noted pressure on soles of feet while standing was higher than at heel and ball of foot. Sensation was also more prominent at inside of each foot compared to the outside. Started walking and noted shift in pressure and varying levels of cool sensation from heel to toes as weight shifted forward. These sensations reduced from heel to toe as each foot was lifted and moved forward. Notes sharper sensations as start line pattern either along or across the foot and recognize this as being caused by the joints between the lines. Some steps included a thickness at toes when lifting the foot. Other steps had a sound and slipping sensation when placing the heel. 
thoughts across regularly, arose regularly, and continued for a while before sensations at feet became noticeable again. Continued in this way for 30 minutes until the bell rang. Sitting practice. Started by bringing attention to the touch of air at the nostrils. Noted how the touch set started at opening of nostril and moved along inside of nose on each in-breath, reflecting on experience as I write this report. Realized that I didn't note the sensations at top of nose on the out-breath, where sensations were more prominent at opening of nostrils and upper lip. Noted wetness on inside at top of nose and how this moved to the throat. Noticed rumbling sounds and pressure of the air moving up throat and through mouth and nose with a burp. Thoughts arose, just observe them, no, noting how one led to another before awareness of bodily sensations became prominent again and attention returned to breath. Practice continued in this way for 30 minutes. Felt alert, refreshed after practice and while writing this report. End of report. Okay, here also a good way of practice. Now 30 minutes each you have spent on walking and sitting. So that's a good starting point. Now this uh, rhythm, you have to maintain it. Try to fix it into your daily schedule and try and see whether you can continue this practice as a part of your daily schedule. Every day, at least one hour, can I spend for my mental hygiene or the mental health? That's the target we, we, we want to maintain. At least one hour, two hours can I spend daily towards my mental health? And can I maintain it? Like how you exercise, how you go to gym, so every day or every other day you are doing that because you are concerned about your mental health. Sorry, about your physical health. So this is the same. When you, when you introduce this type of a practice, even within one or two sessions, you can feel that this is helping. This is making my mind more peaceful and quieter. But uh, you have to maintain this rhythm for some time to see the real results maybe for a few months maybe for a few years if you continue this way if you make it a habit of your daily schedule then you realize the real potential of this practice so that's why i mentioned maybe last week that that creating fire out of the wooden sticks so you can of course put effort and continue for a while but you, you get tired and you keep it aside and again after 30 or so minutes you start again you get tired you keep it aside you start but you you won't get any results that way so the wooden sticks when if you want to create fire you have to rub it for a long period it may become difficult after a while, but still you have to continue somehow. You continue, continue, and after a while you see there's smoke coming. Now that's another good sign. Okay, I have to put more effort. I have to somehow power through this. And then only you will get fire. So this practice is also the same. You can do it for some time, but you forget. After a while, you forget and you keep it aside. Then again, you start. Again, after a few weeks, you start. So that, that, that won't work. You have to make sure that this is a part of your daily schedule. Every day, at least one hour, can I spend? Can I make sure that I have this time reserved 
for the mental health and can I maintain that pace for some time, maybe for a few months. And when you do that, you can see results. You can see real results that this is very much helping my day-to-day life. And this is helping my mind to deal with this day-to-day turmoil. So that's the invitation. Try and see whether you can make this a part of your daily schedule. At least one hour I'm spending for this. And I'm doing it every day as a part of my schedule. So one or two days you may miss, but still you can continue this space and continue to spend that time on the practice. So that's the invitation. And we will see whether you can continue this way and you can continue to report. Thank you, Bhante. <clears throat> the next item is um, any questions. If you've got any questions, please you can raise your Zoom hand or type it in here and I will read it out to you. We'll give it uh, about 30 seconds to see if anyone's interested in asking a question. Arosha has his hand up. Arosha, go ahead. Thank you, Sonali, and thank you, Pante, for, for that uh, analysis and advice on the reports. Um, my question relates to that and also reflecting on um, something you said uh, during the last session about how sometimes um, the, the part of the storytelling during the practice is on how to report the practice. Um, and so what I my response to that, having experienced that myself, was to not push myself to write a report after every uh, session of practice, but only when um, I had, I felt I had time and, and the mood uh, struck me as I can write a report today. Um, and I'm just wondering, Bhante, is it appropriate to just write reports when the circumstances allow or should I be putting more effort and time to make sure I'm writing a report after each session of practice? So now when it comes to practice, as you mentioned that report writing, it will be a part of the storytelling. And that's a phase that we have to somehow get through because initially these things happen these things happen, you, your mind start wondering about the practice, about the reporting. And that becomes a burden for you. But with time, they will go away. It is like, you know, when you do go for something new, when you go to a new job or when you enter into a new relationship, that's all in your head. All the time you think about that, all the time you are storytelling about that. It's the same thing with the practice. When you start this practice, when you are energetic about it, you start storytelling. So now, if you are continuing your practice every day, it is okay to write a report every two, three days and just keep it for your records. And if you have that type of a record journal, then of course you can see your own progress, right? So this is how I started and this is how I progressed in this practice. And when you practice more and more, you can answer your own questions that you had earlier. When you read your reports, uh, these things are a problem to me at that time. But now I know how to navigate among them. Now they are no longer problems for me. So if you continue your practice daily, it is okay to write a report every two, three days or once a week. That's fine. But if you are only doing once in a while, then it's better to write that experience down after the session and try to maintain that some kind of a rhythm like that. But if you are a practitioner, a daily practitioner, then it's okay to write a report once a week or so. 
and make sure that you get some feedback based on that and that keeps you moving that helps you otherwise you know after a while we get this tendency to give up on these things so you have to somehow create some kind of effort and continue for some period otherwise it will become another part of your life and it will just you know you forget after a while so that is happening more more majority of the people they can start something they can continue for a while and after some time they give up so that won't work with the world you know whatever you want to become successful you have to power through you have to somehow get it done maybe after years of effort finally you achieve success so this is something very valuable in our lives the we are talking about peace and happiness in our mind so if you if some if somebody was asked they will rank it as one of the highest priorities in their life to achieve some kind of a peace in their mind be peace will be calm and be satisfied that's something very valuable in each and every person's life so if you have that value then you have to make sure that you you are spending fair amount of effort towards this otherwise you can't achieve this type of a lasting peace in your mind so whoever achieved that they have put so many hours into their practice through difficulties through various sicknesses they have practiced and that's how they achieve that level otherwise it's just another incident it's just another uh, thing that you passed on your way that won't work so you have to make sure that you are continuing for some time and even with difficulty with so, so many trouble you somehow maintain this practice that is important even for worldly things a job or some kind of education if you want to achieve you have to somehow continue for a long period otherwise you won't get there so same goes for practice if you want to last in peace in your mind then you have to make sure that you are spending proper amount of time every day and you are continuing it for a few years once you continue then you realize oh, now now i have achieved the difficult part i have gone through the difficult part now i can just relax and you know practice will continue somehow initially you are supporting the practice after a while the practice is supporting you so then then you won't have that much trouble but the initial part is very difficult people are asking so many questions they are crying sometimes how to practice i can't create some time some people saying they have so many problems at their homes how to solve them so we are not magicians no we can't give answers to those problems we are saying that you have to somehow find solutions try try creating some kind of a strength in your mind that practice we can give but you have to solve your own problems we have to go through your own difficulties somehow make it better so the strength in this mind will help you do that definitely it will show you the correct path correct way without you know being emotional how to respond to situations properly that strength will be there in your mind that faculty of awareness it is not so colorful you can't sell it very well but when you really think about the ability of that faculty that is the knowing whatever happening you may be i don't know having so many tr- troubles having so many sicknesses but still you can be aware you can know oh, i'm having these troubles i'm having these difficulties these problems are there in my life but awareness is unbelievable the value of that is uh, you can't even measure so that is the faculty we are supporting so it is not sellable it is not colorful 
who can't, you know, uh, sell it properly. The packaging is not that appealing. But when you practice only, you realize oh, this is the most valuable thing as humans we can gather. Even the, the, the scientific name goes under this, right? Homo sapiens sapiens. The one who is aware is the meaning of sapien. Not only he is aware, but he knows that he knows, right? That is why the sapien sapien means there twice, right? So you, not only you are aware, but you can be aware that this is happening. Not only he knows, but he knows that is he knows. So that's the ability. When you're angry, you can know that you're angry. When you're lustful, you can know that you are lustful. When you're jealous, you can know that you are jealous. We are not going to remove those qualities. That's not the way. Instead, we just be aware. When you are angry, if you know that you are angry, that's a superpower. When you are jealous, if you know you are jealous, that's a superpower. That will create a whole difference in your reactions. Most of the people, after it is when it is too late, they will get to know that I was angry. It's too late for them. But the practitioner, they little by little try to develop this faculty of awareness. And when you develop that, each time you realize I'm angry. If I want, I can react. Otherwise, I can just be. That strength is the real human ability that we are talking about. Otherwise, we are just equal to animals. If they're angry, they react. They don't have a choice over there, right? When they see something that they can eat, they just, you know, go after it. They don't have a choice over that. When the season is right, they want to have sex, right? They don't have a choice on that. But the humans, they have this ability. They can create that faculty. They can have a choice over these things. Can do or otherwise skip. That strength is the real human capacity. And the imitation is to develop that strength, nothing else. So you are going beyond your intellect, the thinking mind, you are going beyond that by being in the present moment. We are not even giving values to the thoughts when it comes to the practice. And so the thought is just another thought. Then you move forward. That is how you go beyond the faculty of intellect, the, that is this intellect, this man's intellect. Otherwise you are giving value to the thoughts and they become a bit and colorful. And you can write whole books, right? Those books, you can, when you read, you can see this is a storytelling, <laughs> a story in one's mind. And they have written maybe 300, 400 pages on that. No value even to the people who read, right? But when you are attentive, you don't have to write stories. Instead, you try to be aware that this is happening, that is happening. Again and again, you practice that awareness without getting lost in thoughts and ideas. So try and see. It is valuable that you write your own records. You have your own records. And with time, you can see your own progress. But make sure that you are continuing your practice and continue maybe every day. If you spend one hour, then if you can keep it for a few, hour, a few months, then you can see real results. Thank you. Thank you, Bhante. Uh, anybody else who wish to ask a question can raise your hand. Um, doesn't look like anyone else is uh, raising their hand. So over to you now, Bhante, for the next item. Thank you very much, Sonali, for conducting the Q&A session and much merits to Bhante for going through the reports and the questions and providing us with insightful advice here. Uh, next is uh, for us to be further enlightened by a talk from Bhante, 
So on behalf of everyone, I would like to uh, uh, respectfully uh, invite uh, Bhante uh, to uh, provide us with uh, further insight and guidance through a talk on mindfulness. Over to Bhante, much merits. Thank you, Bhante. Dear friends, so I think we can spend about uh, 20 minutes discussing a little bit more on the practice. So today I thought now when it comes to our life, we see this outside world and we, we usually experiment. We usually observe, we try to find more and more details about this outside world. So that's why maybe we send telescopes to the space and try to get more and more details. Right now, James Webb is working and we are receiving new photographs and never seen universe you can, you are getting to see. They start to appear. Right. So the further you look, more things will appear. And again and again, you are finding more and more details. So these things are natural to the world. More you experiment, more and more things you will find. So usually the science, the people, they think that this is the real knowledge. This is the real value. And if we ask that after finding so much information, are they happy? Do they have peace in their mind? Then they will definitely say no. I want to find a few more galaxies. Then can I be happy? Right. I want to find more and more details about this world then can I be happy? So that is the way of world. You try to experiment in the outside world. You try to find more and more details about the outside world. But still, it is never ending and nobody will be satisfied with these results. Again and again, they want to experiment. They want the more and more questions will appear. That is how the world works. The outside world. That's why even after researching for so many years, when it comes to quantum physics, finally they came with more and more questions. Towards the end of those scientists, they said, this is a waste of time. I spent 50 years of my life researching on these things and it hadn't taken me anywhere. So that's the results usually after lifetime of experiments, lifetime of science, lifetime of research, they are saying this was a waste of time. And more and more you try to find, more and more questions will appear. So that's the world. Usually the people are talking about. That's the world usually people are thinking about. But when it comes to a practitioner, they too experiment on a world. They experiment on their inner world. And that experiment is called a noble experiment because that is something that you can finish within a lifetime. Maybe within even a few years, you can finish this experiment and you can find lasting peace in your mind. So what is this inner world that we are talking about? That's the inner world with your six senses. 
you have your eyes and the sights that you see. You have your ears and the sounds that you hear. Then you have your body and the things that you feel with your body. Then you have your smell and taste and the things that you smell or taste. Then finally, you have your mind and the mind objects. So those are the inner world that we are talking about, the sixth sense world of ours. So if you experiment on this inner world, then it is called a noble experiment because that's an experiment you can finish within this lifetime. In this very life, you can find results by doing this experiment. So that is what we are doing as mindful practitioners. We are trying to experiment. We are trying to find out. We are trying to observe our inner world. When it comes to this world, usually people, they won't give that much attention. They don't appreciate this type of uh, experiment. But the practitioner, they pay attention. They appreciate being with themselves. They try to observe what is happening in their mind. So that observation is what we are doing when we do our walking and sitting practice. You try to be aware. That is what we are practicing. We practice mindfulness. We practice wakefulness. We try to be aware. So this is not a single less job. Instead, you practice this again and again. You spend some time daily. Try to do 30 minutes of walk, 30 minutes of sitting, and try to observe what is happening. Initially, you might find it is very difficult. My mind is going after so many thoughts, so many incidents are popping into my head. So many problems are there in my life. So you will come with complaints. That what we are telling is that it is natural that you feel this way because this is a project that you haven't done before. You haven't touched your mind before. So you have allowed it to wander in whatever the ways it's like. So when you do that for years and years, suddenly when you want to pay attention to your mind, it goes crazy. All the thoughts in the entire world will come into it. Then all the problems are there. You can't be aware for even a few seconds. That is natural. That is natural to a mind that has run wild for the entire lifetime. But little by little, you again and again try to notice what is happening. Maybe you start with five minutes and try to increase a minute day. Today you start with five minutes of walking. Tomorrow you try to walk for six minutes. Little by little, you try to observe what is happening. You don't have to do anything else. Just give the priority to the body. Use body as your anchor and try to navigate this stormy seas of your mind. So when it comes to these sensors, they said that eye is like a ocean. And the sights are the waves in this ocean. Ear is like an ocean. And the sounds are waves in this ocean. Mind is like an ocean. And the mind objects are waves in this ocean. So this ocean you are trying to navigate, your anchor is your body. If you observe your steps, 
that's your anchor. If you observe your breath, that's your anchor. That is your starting point. So again and again, you give priority to your body and observe what is happening. Again and again, you give priority to your breath and observe what is happening. So this process, you continue again and again and try to navigate these stormy seas. And with time, you realize, although I started with my body, although I started with my steps, or although I started with my breath, they too are becoming less and less prominent. So this is a very good period in your practice. When you practice, if your practice is growing, you will realize after a while, I can't maintain my attention with the body and instead it will go to thoughts, it will go to sounds, various mental objects will appear, but it will naturally come to my body again. It will naturally come to my breath again. So at this point, you have to realize now the practice is evolving on its own. And you just have to accept that change in your practice. At this moment, if you try to force your attention into breath or into steps, then you might have difficulties. But you develop this natural ability to be aware among all these thoughts, sounds, and bodily sensations. So that strength, you have to develop in your practice little by little. And you realize now, although the attention is moving here and there, it is naturally coming to the steps or it is naturally coming to the breath again. So this ability is very valuable one because now you know if you just maintain your awareness, the attention will go away and it will naturally return to your body. Although it returns, it will go away again, and again it will naturally return. So if you are able to let this natural flow and observe what is happening, then your practice is developing into a whole new level. Now you are not trying to control this mind that much, but instead you try to be aware of what is happening. So all the past things may appear in your mind. The psychological wounds that you might had will appear. Past incidents, various people that were in your life and some wounds, those things may appear. So you may start to feel that it is too difficult. And these things are creating so much trouble in my mind. But that is the real healing process that is happening naturally. And you just have to let it happen. You just have to accept the process that is going on. And when you accept that, then with time, you realize this practice is really healing you. Healing the wounds of your mind. If you deny these things, if you deny these uh, incidents, if you refuse to deal with them, then your practice won't go. It won't grow after that point. So you have to make sure that whatever comes in the practice, it is okay. Can I be aware among these things? Sometimes for maybe 30, 40 minutes, the last full thoughts appear. You get doubts whether this is meditation or some other thing. 
and sometimes you may come and complain that I spent one hour and not a single moment I was away from the lustful thoughts. Entire one hour I was uh, lustful and those were the thoughts inside me. So it is natural to get doubts when you face such situations. And when you have such experiences, you may come and say that these things won't go away. They are coming again and again. And they are, they are to stay. You might think. But what is happening is that this is a healing process that is happening. So these thoughts, they come again and again and again. They come and go. Again and again and again, the past incidents may appear. But when you develop this ability to let them come and go and just be aware, if you have that ability, then you realize with time and reducing their power. I am reducing the energy that they have. So it is really accepting whatever the person who you are, you have to accept during your practice. You can't really refuse those things. Maybe the wounds are there. Maybe the defects are there. Your entire lifetime, you may have refused those things. But in the practice, you are welcoming them. And you are accepting this real nature that is yourself. You accept the mind that is yourself. And when you accept that, with time, you realize that I am becoming more and more peaceful and calm because these things I used to refuse, now I am accepting. With the strength of my mind, I am able to deal with them. And when you do that, you are suddenly reducing the power that they had over you. So some people, they want to get rid of the anger. Some people, they want to get rid of the lust. That you really can't do. As long as you have a mind, anger will be there. As long as you have a mind, lust will be there. As long as you have a mind, Ignorance will be there. So what you can do is just accept these things. They too are a part of my mind. They too represent some qualities of my mind. And when you accept them, when you have that change in your viewpoint, then that will make a huge difference in your practice. That will help you to find the real answer to these questions, these problems. These qualities will be there, but your reaction to them will change. You can't fight anger with anger. Instead, you just accept anger as a part of my mind. You accept lust as a part of your mind. And that is the real progress that we want to make in our practice. And gradually, 
everybody is moving forward towards that way. If you practice, if you continue one day, you will face with these problems. Then somehow you have to find a solution. Can I accept these qualities in my mind? Why am I still denying them? Am I still refusing them? As soon as you accept, then that will create a huge change, huge difference in your mind. You are no longer in denial. Instead, you know that these two are qualities of my mind. You are not going to feed these qualities as you used to do. Instead, you just accept them as a part of your mind. And when you do that, you realize although the, these qualities are there, they are not harming me. I am not giving power to them. Instead, I give the power to the necessary things, the healthy things that I want to maintain, I want to improve. So that the choices that we have to make, we can make them wisely because we have this awareness, we have this strength in our mind and we know I'm this type of a person. I know. If I don't know, how should I deal with the other people? Without knowing myself, how can I make me happy? So you have to first find out about yourself, what type of a person I am. Only through the practice, only listening to your inner world, only experimenting your inner world, you can get to know these qualities. You can get to know the real person who you are. So that is why we, when we call, think about this practice, we say it is self-discovery. Discovering yourself and paying attention again and again. And you discover yourself. So initially you have some outlook. Now this is me. But with time, it will evolve into a totally different viewpoint. So initially you thought this is me, but after studying for some time, you realize oh, no, not, not that type of a person I am. Instead, I am a totally different person. So that type of a investigation we are doing on ourselves. That's why we call it self-discovery. And more and more you practice, more and more things you realize about yourself. And with that realization, of course, you can deal with the society, deal with your family, and try to maintain some kind of a peace in your mind. Try to find some kind of a lasting happiness in your mind. So that's why, although we have other things to do, we try to continue our practice. We try to gather every week and try to discuss certain aspects of the practice. We try to implement them in our practice sessions, then do it again. We try to implement these ideas. So that's how we make progress. And this is an invitation to investigate about yourself and discover more and more about yourself. So I hope these uh, words were useful and thank you for listening. Much merit Subhante for that uh, very insightful talk on mindfulness. I believe Bhante went in to explain uh, a lot of details in different uh, branches touching all around mindfulness. And it is uh, for me, it was very insightful 
uh, here seated mindfully and then uh, listening to Bhante's insightful uh, words on mindfulness. It was a very uh, uh, different level of experience and much merits to Bhante for such a elaborate uh, uh, expansion of the subject. I would uh, like to uh, provide the opportunity for anyone with any questions on the talk itself uh, with a brief opportunity to uh, present such a question. I can see Gihanta raising hand. Uh, I will give you an opportunity. You can uh, present your question now, Gihanta. Thank you. Um, thank you, Namanta, and uh, thank you, Bante, for uh, your um, guidance so far. Um, during your talk, you mentioned that actually the power of mindfulness is not uh, necessarily you know, to try and get advice from other people, but it's to uh, develop our own capacity uh, to uh, resolve our problems. Um, one of the areas that um, I find challenging in life uh, is anxiety. I have a lot of anxiety, particularly in relation to my work. Um, and uh, I would like to know how I can use mindfulness uh, to be able to, um, uh, uh, to tackle anxiety, uh, particularly in relation to work, uh, and particularly in relation to um, having to do multiple things uh, in our very busy lives. Uh, that's my first question. Uh, and my second question, again, you may not have time, Bhante, so maybe it's something we can discuss next time. I remember you saying that uh, positivity is important. And um, in, in, in sort of learning the Dhamma, I, I have for the most part heard about seeing things as they are and, and, and to be neutral about things. But in, um, in, um, in business and in the worldly life, uh, you hear a lot about positivity rather than neutrality. So I would like also to understand your thoughts about the you know, is it neutrality and seeing things as they are? Is that is what is important? Or do we try to be positive? And in my life, I practically, I have seen that if I am positive, uh, the outcomes are better. So I, I would like you, your uh, thoughts about these two subjects. Uh, thank you, Bhante. Okay, so anxiety. Now, when you uh, face your day-to-day -day situations, you work when you have a family to maintain and when you have so many tasks in your day-to-day -day life it is natural to create this type of a situation it is natural to be anxious about these things and it's a natural product of our day-to-day -day lives right so we have to find a solution so that's why you're asking and so many people, they are struggling with these problems these days, especially with the technology and all these things. More and more anxious the people are becoming. So what is the solution? And the solution we are encouraging is not a quick fix. Instead, it is, it's a lasting solution. So you have to understand, you have to put some effort Put some time towards it. Otherwise, you can't find this type of a solution. Otherwise, you have you don't have proper investment towards this type of a solution. So you have to make sure that you are spending some time daily towards this type of a practice. And as soon as you do that, within even a few minutes, you can see the results. Now let's say if you can try and be aware, if you can sit and practice awareness, sit and be mindful for 20 minutes or 10 minutes or 15 minutes, what will you feel? You feel calm and peaceful in your mind. And you can really relate to the point how you started and how am I now? So within like 10, 15 minutes of practice, you can see that anxiety is going away and your mind 
will become peaceful. But again, you go back to your work within another few minutes or one or two hours, you are back to your usual level. So you see a change in the practice, but when you return to your work, return to a usual life, then again, anxiety comes. So what you have to do is that you have to understand that if my mind is mindful, there is no anxiety. But at least the anxiety is low. So that quality you have to develop in your mind. If your mind is not mindful, if your mind doesn't have that type of a quality, then it is natural to be anxious. It is natural to feel this type of a difficulty in your day-to-day -day life. So you have to somehow invest your time and develop this quality of your mind. So that's an investment you have to little by little do. And when you do that, you can really feel that this practice is helping. And with this practice, you can somehow manage your day-to-day -day situations without being so anxious. We are not encouraging you to change the surrounding situations, but we are encouraging you to change your inner world. You are, we are encouraging you to change your mind. We are encouraging you to change your way of thinking. We are encouraging you to change your outlook over things. So that change will naturally come when you practice. And in the practice, we try to just be aware. We are not going to react. Instead, we just try to practice this awareness. Let's say some things, let's say thoughts. Some thoughts are, you feel like they are positive. So you want to react in a positive way. Then some thoughts are negative. So you want to react in a negative way. Otherwise, some thoughts are pleasurable. Some thoughts are painful. So when the pain comes, you want to react to it. When the pleasure comes, you want to react to it. So as the practitioner, you just try to be neutral and try to know uh, now the thoughts are pleasurable, now the thoughts are painful. Now the body is pleasurable, now the body is painful. So instead of reacting as you are usually doing, you just be the observer. You just try to maintain that neutral type of a reaction towards these things. Just being aware and try to let them pass. So that when, when you have developed that quality of being aware among pleasurable things, among painful things, you really develop this ability to react in the whatever way you want. So that comes to the second part of your question. Now, should I be neutral? Should I re react positively or should I react negatively? So that is up to you. you can, if you have a choice, then of course, at a moment you can react positively. At a moment you can uh, stay neutral at a moment, you can react negatively. So if you have real control in your mind, you can react whatever the way you like. If you don't have this control, then negative things you re react negatively. Positive things you react positively. That is what comes naturally to us. But if you really develop your mind, then of course, for the negative things, if you want, you can react negatively. Otherwise, you can be neutral. Otherwise, you can react positively. For the positive things, 
if you want, you can react negatively. If you want, you can be neutral. If you want, you can react positively. Imagine a person coming and blaming you and you are smiling. What will happen? Usually, it, it will create questions. What is happening? I can't press buttons and control this person. And so do you have control in within you? If you want, you can react positively. If you want, you can be neutral. If you want, you can uh, react negatively. So that type of control we are developing. And then you have a choice. You have a choice. Certain situations, you can't just be ne neutral. Sometimes you have to react. So that reaction, if you have a choice, then you are free. If you don't have a choice, then you are uh, dependent on somebody else's remote. So it is so easy to control some people. You go, go just blame them. And you know this is their reaction. You go and praise them. You know this is their reaction. So that's the natural way of reacting. And that's what comes naturally. But a practitioner, they uh, develop this ability by being aware without reacting. You just being aware, you can develop this ability. If you want, you can react. If you want, you can just be neutral. So that type of quality we are developing in your mind. And there is another part in your question. Now, when we practice also, we try to see the positive parts. We try to approach it positively. Let's say when you are mindful, there may be so many occasions that you were not mindful. But we are saying don't talk about those things. Only encourage the part that you were mindful. Just talk about at least one breath that you observed. Just talk about a step that you observed. Start with that. And then develop your practice. Give, give you a value to those parts. So that approach, that positive approach, of course, you can use. So that is a valid thing that, that we are even doing in our practice. Because your mind is the forerunner. If you think everything is good, then they will become good. If you think they are bad, they will become bad. So that's why Pollyanna is saying, glad game, whatever that happens, can I be glad? Then that person is not talking about negative things. Instead, he's having a positive kind of a vibration. So this is a difficult question, deep question that we have to take time and discuss. But anyway, there are various things are there. First thing is that if you, uh, you have control in your mind, you can react positively, negatively, or neutral. That's the ability you have to develop. Otherwise, if you are reacting in the natural way, then you are giving your control to somebody else. Then the second thing is that even when it comes to the practice, even when it comes to the, the situations that we face, we try to find some positivity there. We try to be glad that we met with these situations. Although at times they were unbearable, with time you realize oh, because of these situations, today I am seeking them. Because of these situations, today I am going in this way. So Pollyanna's glad game somehow we are introducing. So I hope I gave a fair answer to your question. Thank you very much, Pante. Very, uh, very deep. Um, and, and also you have presented things that I've not heard before. Uh, I'm very grateful. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bhante, and much thanks to Bhante for uh, taking uh, more time than usual and elaborating on that uh, question. Indeed, a very uh, uh, detailed and profound uh, reply, insightful reply from Bhante. Much thanks to Bhante. Now, with that, uh, we are coming towards the uh, end of the session. 
I would like to thank on behalf of all of us uh, participating to today's program uh, for Bante, uh, Venerable Bante Homagama Dhamma uh, for representing Ms. Saranawane Forest Monastery and taking the time out from Bante's schedule to uh, provide us with uh, uh, valued insight on um, something very uh, deep and profound like uh, mindfulness. So uh, we wish Bhante uh, to be able to develop further and further in Bhante's own practice uh, with the merits of this great deed. So thank you, Bhante. Then I would like to thank all the, the participants and the organizers participating and working hard on this session uh, being a, a reality. And also I must mention uh, the person who initiate, uh, initiated this uh, program, for instructing us and allowing us to have this program. And then uh, with that, I would like to uh, sum up the session on mindfulness. I will go into some uh, brief messages from our side. Uh, firstly, I'll share the screen quickly. Okay, you can see on screen Mithrigal Nisaranwane website that is nisarana.lk and you can go on this website and find various resources to help you further to learn about the Forest Monastery as well as to uh, find more uh, information to further practice. Secondly, I would like to announce briefly the Satipasala Foundation. This is uh, on the website satipasala.org and you can visit here and learn about the multiple initiatives being launched from Satipasala Foundation to uh, allow mindful teaching to be spread out across the world and across Sri Lanka in schools and other institutions. So those are the first two uh, announcements. I will stop sharing the screen. And the third and final announcement is for you to uh, keep inviting any likely friends or uh, companions on this path of mindfulness. So this uh, is a valued uh, session, uh, especially looking at today's world where there's a lot of stress related to work and other activities surrounding a normal person's life. Anybody can come in and enjoy the multiple benefits of this by taking part in this session. Uh, if the time is suitable for, based on your geographical location, where, depending on where you are living, you can take part in this. So with those three uh, announcements, I would like to wish all of you a mindful week ahead until we see you next week and hope you will be able to uh, keep um, uh, discipline in doing some mindful walking and sitting practices throughout the week and hope to see you next week. I will end the session now. And once again, thank you so much for your participation. Uh, we would like to see you next week as well. Thank you very much. I will end the session.